Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to take a step away from making a vintage pattern or a vintage piece to talk about something that is in nature very vintage, and that is alterations. Historically speaking, many articles of clothing may have been made at home, and previous to that, prior to World War II, World War I, they would have been made by a mantua maker or a dressmaker, and so things would have been made to fit the body very well of the person who was actually purchasing a garment. Nowadays, and truly with the introduction of standardized sizing in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, we worked out of that and ended up moving toward a system that unfortunately has required extensive alterations in order to allow things to truly fit the individual well. We've already seen it here on this channel, even in patterns that I have pulled out from the 40s and 50s, um, needing to make alterations to printed patterns. Um, but now we're seeing a necessity of using that further in garments that we purchase either online or in stores. Now, historically speaking, alterations would have been done in a variety of ways. They could have been done by someone at home, or they may have been taken to a seamstress or a dressmaker who would have done those alterations for you. Um, either way, alterations are not uncommon. And even in the past, when things had been made very specifically for an individual, alterations later were not uncommon. In fact, reusing clothes and getting your full worth out of them as fashions changed and so forth, taking old teams out, um, to change the overall shape or if someone gained or lost weight altering clothing in order to continue to the, allow the user to wear that article of clothing was very common. Today we're working on a dress for a friend of mine who is getting ready for a wedding. Now she ordered this lovely dress online and it was made for her but it was made based on a single measurement truly which is the bust measurement. Now she did send them all of her measurements, but what I mean when I say it was made based on one measurement is that A-line dresses and on pure waisted dresses or dresses that gather shortly under the bust and then fall away from the body tend to be made or fitted, the patterns tend to be retrofitted based on a bust measurement. Now that's great if your whole body fits the perfect form, but for many of us that's not the case. Some of us may have much larger hips that wouldn't be reflected in a bust size, or my gals out there who are quite a bit more busty, this may completely impact the rest of your garment, which is to say that as the bust line goes up, the entire garment goes up, including things like the width of the shoulder, which we regularly find to be a problem for many of our ladies out there if, who have larger busts. The whole top of the shirt becomes larger and things like shoulders falling off or out of place become very common. Now, the good thing about this is that that's an easy fix for many women, depending on the style of garment that it is. In this particular case for my friend, she does have a larger bust measurement, but she's not a larger gal. And so this here does come out too far on her and it does slip off of her shoulders. One way that we can fix this for garments such as this with this deep V here, is to simply reduce this here in the shoulder. And by taking up here, I will effectively bring the shoulders up onto the shoulders a bit better, allow this to fit a bit more tight. Um, and while it won't impact the overall integrity of this bust measurement, it will impact the integrity of the shoulder measurement which will be a good thing for my friend. That is actually an alteration that is not uncommon for ladies who are a bit busty needing to have the shoulders taken up or the waists and tummies taken in on things like button down blouses or dresses. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do that type of alteration. In particular, we can simply take this up, fold it in, pinch and sew. But if you can see, it's gonna leave a big old wad of fabric, which we don't really want to do. Okay, so what we are gonna do is take this seam out of the top that runs along the back shoulder and runs along the front here. Once we remove those, we can nip out a small dart 
on each side, leaving the total width in the shoulder here the same, but bringing it in closer and taking the bulk of the fabric out here. Once that's completed, we can actually remove that fabric entirely, which will remove the bulk, and then re-sew this seam down or this hem down in order to hide that. It'll be quick, it'll be fairly painless, and it will create a lovely garment that fits well. The other thing that um, did happen with this garment that I unfortunately didn't get on camera, sorry about that, is um, where this dress has a slit in the front, there had been a long seam that ran the entire length of the dress. It unfortunately created an unflattering pucker across the front, and so we completely removed that seam. Luckily, it had not been a cut piece, and by removing that seam here, we created a nice smooth line with the fabric. There are no seams in the front. There's this lovely gathering detail, but that's not impacting things versus a cut seam, much like the side seam here, it creates an unattractive look. So we did fix that and we'll take this in. We're adding a little bit of trim detail for fun, um, but let's just go ahead and walk through step-by-step step how to take these shoulder seams up. Occasionally alterations can seem very daunting to the home seamstress, especially to someone who's just learning how to sew. Taking something in, letting something out can seem like you might risk ruining the garment by say, taking a seam out. But one thing I can say with certainty is it was not uncommon in the past and it shouldn't be now because while we might risk ruining a garment if we don't do it right, if we never wear it because it doesn't fit right, we're nonetheless using the garment. So let's try when we can to make things fit us nicely. And if that means taking it to somebody else, a friend or even a professional, that's always a wonderful way to maintain the integrity of your clothes and make sure you have something that fits you beautifully that you can feel confident in. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's start by taking a look at this shoulder a little bit closer. Here is the seam for the back neckline and this is for the front. The way they have chose to make this garment is that they put this front interfacing in first, they closed up this top shoulder seam, and then they went ahead and did the back collar. So this piece here is over the top of these pieces. What we will need to do in order to remove a wedge out of the fabric here, out of the shoulder piece, is to start by removing the stitches from this line here that goes along the back. They have simply turned the fabric. This is not an additional piece that is over the top. And so what we will be able to do essentially is to remove this here, remove the wedge of fabric, cut that out and return this seam, this hem here. To get this out, I will need a handy dandy seam ripper very easy and they come in most sewing kits nowadays. So it's not a specialty item. And if for some reason you don't have one in your sewing box, they're usually a dollar or two at any of your local sewing goods stores. Now, of course they do have seam rippers that are much more expensive, that are ergonomical and so forth. Choose what you like. There's no wrong answer with these. As long as they have a nice end here and you can hang on to them, it's the right one. So let's start with that. Once I have marked the dart from the back of this shoulder seam here to the edge of the neckline, all I need to do then is make sure that both sides of the garment are the same, run that stitch, remove the triangle wedge of fabric, and then I will be able to come back around and pull this back over the top finishing that seam again, making everything smooth and clean. All right, I have the shoulder seams ripped, repinned, and marked with the darts with the amount of fabric that I will be removing. You'll notice I have come from the original stitch line on both sides and moved away from it so that the original integrity of this 
um, area here at the edge of the shoulder will not be impacted. I wanted the width of the, the armhole to remain the same, um, simply to reduce the amount of fabric that we had at the neckline. So that will do that. Here we are with two sewn seams. And here we are with those seams trimmed. Now I am going to turn these down and flip them in by hand, and then we'll work on putting this seam in the top back in place. Now let's take a look. This is the outside portion of the garment, and this right here where you can see this little jog out, this is the front neckline, this is the back. So remember we had this rolled over, and so we're gonna actually take this piece, even though we've taken that section out, we're gonna pull it right back over the top, and that's going to allow us to refinish that seam, that hem at the top neckline perfectly. We have secured our edge, but now we need to re-secure this section here. If you remember, we went ahead and pulled and ripped this seam out. That's how we opened things up in order to remove that section. So now we need to go ahead, and I'm going to clip a little string here, and we need to close that back up. I'm going to go ahead and just hand stitch it in place, and I'm going to do that because I want everything to really match. So I'm going to come up. And I'm going to use kind of a back stitching technique, which is to say I'm going to go over some of the stitches that are already there. And that's going to re-secure those stitches in place so that the, this doesn't come out any further. I'm going to follow those stitches exactly. And I'm always going to give kind of a little tug at the end. The final step I'm going to take on the top of this shoulder here is I'm going to secure this seam down to the back and that's going to prevent it from accidentally flipping forward and causing kind of an unsightly pucker underneath the front of the garment. To do that what I want to do is just pick up the smallest amount of material from the back of the dress so that the stitch doesn't show through on the other side. and then take a bigger bite out of the material I'm wanting to secure. So I'm going to take a teeny tiny bite. Guys, can you see it's so small? It's barely anything. And the idea is this is going to be like an invisible stitch. Okay. But what we're doing is we're just going to make sure that this continues to lay flat and smooth so that the garment always looks really nice when being worn. All right, guys, and there you have it. It was a very simple alteration that we made today to these tops of these sleeves. As you can see, there is no funky puckering. It doesn't look amiss. We didn't alter the actual size of the opening of the sleeve. We just took that dart out of the top of the shoulders. And it wasn't a big adjustment, but it's going to be just enough to move this off the edges of the shoulders and up further on toward the neckline to keep the garment secure so that my friend can really feel confident just dancing the night away in this gorgeous, gorgeous dress.